Welcome back to Witness. Timbuktu Scribes is the story of a unique project underway in the most famous city of the Sahara Desert, a project to recover Africa's long-lost written heritage. Sankara University, the city's educational hub, was converted into a mosque during the French colonial era. Today, only a few Islamic scholars grace its otherwise empty halls. The university building is an architectural wonder, made of wood and adobe brick, and is recognized as a World Heritage Site. Ironically, Mali, once famous for its scholars and tens of thousands of students, today suffers astronomical illiteracy rates of up to 60 percent. Recently, literacy has risen thanks to a growing number of informal schools staffed by volunteers who teach children to read and write Arabic by studying the Quran. At this high-tech laboratory, the documentation and conservation effort is in progress. Carefully selected manuscripts are photographed in high resolution. And with the help of computers, ancient knowledge is uploaded into the 21st century. First of all, we look at the color of the manuscripts. Then, we make a papyrus that matches that color. After we dry the paper, we clean it. After that, we number the pages from one to the end. And then we begin repairing the pages, pasting them carefully. Then we measure the pages to make sure that we have a manuscript where all the pages are the same size. Doris Abdo and her colleagues were trained by papyrus makers from Dubai. Restoring Timbuktu's manuscripts has become a prestigious vocation. With damaged manuscripts, we paste them on the papyrus. We don't leave them with these torn edges. Some of the documents are very damaged, and these take a long time to repair. I read the manuscripts while repairing them. This work is a protection of the manuscripts and our heritage, our Arab heritage. These manuscripts are our history and are very useful for us. They cover medicine and science. Anything you need to know about life, you can find in these manuscripts. After completing the restoration process, custom-made boxes are crafted to protect the texts. Dust, heat, humidity and termites have destroyed tens of thousands of pages over the centuries. Only 2% of the manuscripts are on display to scholars and visitors like these university students from London. <laughs> Amazing to see. It's so beautiful. And the different styles and everything, the calligraphy is just beautiful. Uh, seeing how there's so much literature, even though so much was destroyed, it's just it's great to see that it's all been catalogued and translated and we can learn from this stuff. Like it was nice seeing the um, old pens and all the things you might lay out on your table the stones for sharpening the knives that would then sharpen the pencils and different inks and everything like that. It's quite interesting. You 
These manuscripts cover hundreds of scientific and academic arenas. But I believe the most significant and relevant information for us are those related to ancient medicine. If you read them carefully, there are descriptions of dangerous diseases, as well as detailed descriptions of cures and treatments. What are the great enemies of our people today? Malaria, AIDS, and other diseases which we know very little about. In Central Africa, there is Ebola, a deadly, incurable disease. These ancient manuscripts, dealing with diseases and cures, should be available to the practitioners of modern medicine. I'm sure they will provide a wealth of useful information. Contemporary Mali has enormous needs. Yearly incomes average $1,000, so development of natural resources is essential for economic survival. This man-made canal brings fresh water from the Niger River to parch Timbuktu. The irrigation has made some self-sufficiency in foodstuffs and grains possible in this otherwise dry region. The books have brought an influx of new jobs. We provide employment for many men and women. There are researchers, translators and interpreters who deal with literary content. We also have specially trained technicians to repair and preserve the manuscripts. Mali's tourism industry now features visits to Timbuktu, highlighting the town's intellectual history. These American travelers are spending three days in the city on a visit centered around the manuscripts. So they were eclectic yeah. and they gathered. That's why he talked about the scholars of West Africa. This sign here, if you lose oh. the pages, so you can follow it with Yeah, you, you have to fetch for that word yeah, yeah. so that it continues. At the end of that page is right here. At the end of that, that's numbering. That's a reminder for the next page. Did they repeat the last word on the next page? Yeah, the, the single, yeah. separate what word. So that uh -huh. That's a reminder of this word. And this is the Quran, 17th century. With the growth of the manuscript industry, others are likely to follow and give this town at the edge of the Sahara better prospects for the future. Right now, there is only one paved road in all of Timbuktu. The elders of the fabled city have pinned their hopes on crumbling books, optimistic that their history will point the way to their future. The use of our manuscripts, like other natural resources, such as gold and oil, is important. However, gold and oil are finite while the know-how and the lasting value of these manuscripts is infinite. That's it for now. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time on Witness. Thank you.